Hello everyone, it's the interview queen, Alicia Atu here, and I'm so excited to welcome you all to my interview with Simone Johnson. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm doing all right, all things considered. How are you holding up with everything going on? Are you keeping sane during quarantine? Yeah, um, I'm good. I, I think, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's been a very crazy past couple months for everyone, but I've been doing pretty good and just trying to stay safe and sane the best that we all can. Exactly. I think that's the main important part, as long as we kind of keep doing our part to try to make everything get a little better piece by piece and keep ourselves okay at the same time. Hopefully everything will be all right in the end. Yeah, exactly. Well, a little birdie told me that you've been playing Sims for hours and <laughs> hours at a time. Um, so do you, have a pretty nice, do you have a pretty nice life in the game? Yeah, okay. Well, Indy lives with me, and it bothers her so much that I play it for hours and hours. It's probably like an hour, maybe two. But, yeah, um, Sims, I never really played video games up until this quarantine. But, yeah, Sims is fun. I'd recommend it. It's a good way to kind of take your mind off stuff and waste time. <laughs> yeah, I downloaded the mobile game, because I used to have it for my DS, like, years and years ago. And it's amazing how you'll look at the clock and then two hours go by and you don't even oh, realize yeah. it yeah oh, it's yeah but i mean i guess that's kind of the point of video games i had always said like oh i don't want to play video games because i feel like i'll end up like wasting so much of my time on that and then long behold that's exactly what happened but <laughs> here we are <laughs> well if you had to choose only one do you think it would be to only play sims or to only play assassin's creed um oh I don't know. Probably Sims, because I feel like with Assassin's Creed, I'll get frustrated because I'll, like, won't be able to figure something out. And then <laughs> that would just, like, frustrate me because I'll keep doing, like, the same thing over and over again. But I think with Sims, it's pretty simple. <laughs> like, right. I don't really get frustrated there because you don't have to, like, complete any quests or anything. So probably Sims. More happiness, less anger in the gaming exactly. world. <laughs> I think that betters everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Another passion of yours outside of video games is actually horse riding. So is that something you've loved since you were a kid? Did that come a little bit later on? Yeah, so I um, I started horseback riding when I was, I think, six or seven. And I did it on and off all the way up until I was 14. And then I took a break. And then recently, um, a friend of mine started doing it again. And then I went with her. And then that's kind of like reignited my passion for it. But I really love it, and I didn't realize how much I loved it and how much I missed it until I started doing it again. So that's kind of another good thing that this whole coronavirus mess has brought me in a way because it's given me time to explore that other passion. And is there actually like a stable that's near where you're living now that you can actually go to, or how, how does that work during all of this? Yeah, I found this place in uh, Sanford that's about like a half hour away from me so I try to go there at least um twice or three times a week it's just uh, a sounds- big, it's kind of like take my mind off of everything if that makes sense oh absolutely I mean I've never done it before but anytime I've met someone who has they just say it's advice to kind of like sit back and you're literally just focused it's peaceful you're kind of in nature and with another yeah. um you know not not a human being but another uh, life <laughs> and um it, it's just supposed to be really nice it is fun I like it and I guess since we're talking about animals, how was goat yoga a couple weeks ago? Because that oh looked so God. cute. It was so good. Um, I hadn't done yoga in years. And, like, I know I had so many people tell me, like, you need to do yoga. You need to do yoga, especially because you wrestle. It's good for your body. And I was like, okay, yeah, you're probably right. And then um, a friend of mine did goat yoga. And I was like, okay, we need to try this. And then we went and did it. And it was, it was great. It was, like, 90% yoga, 10%. I mean, ninety percent goats, ten percent yoga, but still, that's what you just want. <laughs> was really good. Oh my gosh, that's so cute! I think yeah. that's something I've looked up way too many videos of. I don't know when goats started becoming a thing or going viral, but but I think definitely try it. Like it needs to be on your bucket list of just random okay. things. I'll definitely have to add it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, a huge congratulations is in order because you have officially signed with WWE and the internet, you're welcome, the internet blew up when that photo of you was posted in the training center. So did it feel pretty amazing just being so welcomed into the community just so positively? 
It was. I mean, still, like, still to this day, whenever I look back on that picture and just when that whole announcement came out, it still doesn't feel real to me because there's a part of me that still feels like that 10-year-old girl that fell in love with wrestling. And then whenever I see that picture and I see all the responses I've been getting from it, it's still, it's so crazy to just wrap my head around that, that that is now my life. And I feel so humbled by it and I'm so grateful. And it, I can't explain it. It really just makes me so happy. You mentioned being a 10-year-old girl there loving it. So I know this has been a goal of yours for a very long time. And I feel like a lot of people would have expected that your dad was the one who introduced you into wrestling. But is it true it was actually your grandmother? Yeah, it was my grandma. Um, when I was a kid, I used to go over to her house all the time on weekends. And I hadn't really watched wrestling at all up until my dad um, returned in 2011. And then... My grandma sat me down and she was like, okay, I think we should start watching wrestling. And my grandma had like cases and cases of wrestling DVDs and I would literally just go through all of them all the time and just watch watch them for hours. And that was what really made me fall in love with wrestling and be like, I want to do this one day. That's awesome. I mean, was it kind of like she introduced it to you first and you grew to love it and then she kind of dropped that on you like oh hey yeah your dad is a mega wrestler or was she just like okay this is obviously a part of our family this is something you should check out because I think you're gonna love it it kind of runs in your blood yeah I think it was more so that I mean obviously my my dad's my dad's dad wrestled and his grandpa and his um they all wrestled so I think my grandma had always wanted that to be a big part of my life and then when my dad came back and started wrestling again I think she thought that that was the right opportunity and she was right and that's what made me fall in love with it. It's amazing too that she really wanted you to enjoy it so you could watch it with her and keep that lineage going Uh, so the fact it all worked Mm -hmm. out she must also have been just super super happy. Yeah she's 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 the best. (laughs) <laughs> uh, well they say that wrestling does run through the blood like I mentioned before um, of course you talked about generations going into the ring so did everything feel fairly natural when you started trading or did it take a little bit to get things down and kind of get into the groove of everything um it it takes time I think everyone's journey is different but for me I know it was hard it still is very hard for me and also, um, like, I just have a hard time connecting, like, seeing, like, this is what you need to do and then make your body do it. Like, that's always been hard for me. So I'm one of those people that literally has to do something, like, 50 times <laughs> until I get it. But I don't know. That's just me. And I think that wrestling is it's hard. There's no way around that. But I think, like, with anything, if you really put your mind to it and you work really really hard then you will get it but it takes time it takes repetition and the biggest thing it takes is patience and I still have a big problem with that because I'm not a very patient person (laughs) I feel like the things I hear from people is it takes patience and passion so the fact that something might be thrown your way and you're like oh no like this is a little difficult Uh, the fact that you will work your butt off at the PC over and over and over until you get it because I've seen the videos I've seen I mean mean, we mentioned her before but yourself an indie there having fun and you know doing drills and stuff so um, it's really cool to see that you still you know you you have that passion you're not going to let something kind of get in your way of the dream you have thank you you're welcome Uh, So something that I saw the other day was how you're really missing Fifth Harmony. So have you been listening to a ton of music during quarantine? Or was that just like a random thought that came into your mind? You're like, I need more new music from them. Um, I think me and Indy were driving in the car and I just put on Fifth Harmony. We were listening to all their old albums and I was like, dang, I really miss that girl group. (laughs) (laughs) So, but I mean, I love, obviously, I'm happy that they're all on their own now and they're being solo performers and they're doing what they love but I still always listen to their old music and I'm like I miss that simpler times before corona happened and everything else in the world (laughs) so now you're like I just wish the good old band would get back together yeah (laughs) Uh, if you could have any band write some entrance music for you in some kind of dream land who would you love to see do so who do you think would fit you super well that's a good question um I have to think about that. I mean, the first the first artist that comes to mind is Slipknot. They're one of my favorite bands of all time. But for me, personally, I don't know what I would say. I feel like I would be in between, like, Slipknot and then maybe, like, 
maybe even like pierce the veil just to be super emo i don't know i'd have to really think about that <laughs> Okay, so did you go through an emo phase growing up? Because, like, I was, I've been super lucky. Um, I grew up listening to tons of bands like that. And I've interviewed Corey Taylor. I interviewed Pierce the Veil. And, like, I just, I was such an emo kid growing up. So is that a scene you went through? And we never leave it. It's, it's never a phase we go out of. I don't really know if I went through it, like, when I was a kid. But I feel like I go through it now. Like, I didn't yeah. really start getting that music until recently. And now I'm like, I feel like I'm living my emo phase now. But I don't know. You do never grow out of it, though. Like, I have friends who were emo when they were in middle school, and nothing has changed. <laughs> yeah, I swear, the only difference with me is I don't have, like, the crazy scene haircut anymore, but otherwise, I'm the same human being. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the cool thing now is you can kind of see how you've evolved over time from when you first started training. I know it hasn't been, like, a crazy amount of time, but a lot has changed, a lot has grown. So when we're, since we're talking about phases, were there any phases you went through growing up that you look back on and you're just like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I did that or I wore that? Um, Probably, I think maybe my most cringy moments would probably just be, like, sixth and seventh grade. Like, when I was in middle school, it was that, like, weird era of, like, Lana Del Rey being really popular, and then like that weird Tumblr aesthetic, yes. like that <laughs> goth pastel Tumblr aesthetic that was a thing when I was in middle school, and we all just wanted to be that like edgy girl, but it really wasn't that edgy. Like I think I oh, listened wait. to like I listened to Lord, and like I thought I was so edgy, and looking back, I'm like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> just stuff like that. Just mixing me like, oh, that wasn't good, but. Yeah. I love Lauren still to this day, but I'm like, I you really weren't that edgy seventh grade Simone. <laughs> I was totally a part of that. It's the funniest thing. Like you see them and they're these beautiful girls. It's not like their songs pack like a crazy punch in terms of it being yeah. heavy or like super edgy. Um, but for some reason there's the stigma that like if you listen to them, you kind of were one of those edgy Tumblr girls. So I totally feel you on that. I, it was a super so weird time. Weird. I don't know why we all thought that. And now everyone that's kind of a, the second phase of that now is like all the Billie Eilish girls with like the E haircuts and stuff. Like it never goes away. It just reincarnates oh, itself. Always a new a new version of being edgy in middle school. <laughs> Um, well, I really want to say thank you so much for hopping on here for taking the time to shoot the breeze for a little bit. It was a pleasure having you on. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you too. This has been super fun. Awesome. That's always lovely to hear. Everyone, this has been the wonderful Simone Johnson. I am the interview queen, Alicia Toot. Be sure to check out aliciatoot.com for all exclusive interviews and features, and we will see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.